So this is a build of the Dart Castings Victoria. It's a fairly simple kit for a rather beautiful prototype. It can be built in either open form, as I'll do, or with a canopy. This is the first video I've made using my soldering iron mounted camera, so please be gentle with your comments. I know there's going to be a few issues. I started with the wheels. I knew this was going to be the most tedious part of the build, so I did it first so that I'd have something to look forward to afterwards. The first job is to remove the etched wheels from the sprue. I do this with either a sharp knife on a hard surface, or alternatively, I just use a good pair of scissors. It can be just as effective. It's important not to deform them too much, as pretty much everything is visible on this model. There is nowhere to hide your mistakes here. Assembling the wheels couldn't be easier. I just stick them on a cocktail stick and use a pair of tweezers to align the spokes. There are actually four laminations to put together to make up the wheels. I only used three of them. I decided I wanted them to look a little delicate and three was enough to give the effect I wanted. Holding them in a pair of tweezers, I flooded the whole wheel with DCC Concepts No Clean Flux that's available on my website. Normally I wouldn't pick up the solder with the iron, but on this occasion it just made life easier. I'm using DCC Concepts 145 degree detail solder. Again, it's available from my website. With a good solder and a good flux, the solder should just flow nicely into the joint. But don't forget the golden rule of soldering, keep it clean. Tarnished metal simply won't take the solder. I'm running my iron here at about 400 degrees. Here on the right side you can see the solder flow beautifully into the joint. This is exactly what I'm looking for. After that it's a relatively simple job just to tidy up the rims with a file. Here's a before and after shot. These were perfectly adequate, but off camera I decided to take the liberty of tidying up the etching cusp on the spokes. It was a very tedious job and I'm not sure I'd bother if I was to do it again. So turning my attention to the white metal parts, this was one of the first models to be made since the kit was reintroduced by Dart Castings. The instructions hadn't been written yet so I was kind of making things up as I was going along. I started with the support for the running boards. For this, I turn my iron down to about 150 degrees. If you don't have a temperature controlled iron, then it can still be done, but you need to be pretty good with a soldering iron and do your joints very carefully and quickly. I wouldn't recommend it for a beginner. Of course, you can still glue it with superglue or epoxy. Next up, there are the springs. One of the nice things about working with white metal for small items is that if you don't solder it quite where you need it, parts can often be persuaded into position. For the white metal, I continued with the DCC Concepts Flux, but switched to a woods metal instead of the solder. I buy it by the kilo from Alec Taranti, and it lasts me about 10 years. I normally like to place tiny nuggets of solder exactly where I want them and just heat it with an iron. This is a lot easier when you're not trying to film yourself doing the process. Often during a build, there's a moment when it starts to look like it's supposed to, and you can feel the end is in sight. In this build, it was about now. The vast majority of the joints here are along the same lines, a drop of flux, a tiny piece of solder and heat with the iron, simple.
Sometimes parts are just a little too small to hold by hand, so the sprung tweezers come in very handy. Sometimes I like to offer things up, partly to make sure everything fits, and partly to remind myself what I'm aiming for. It also helps as a little motivator. The next job was to add the axles, a fairly straightforward job with a temperature controlled iron. But if you don't have one of those, you'd be far better off gluing it. You're dealing with very small parts and tiny amounts of solder and lots of heat. Of course, once one side is done, it's a relatively straightforward job to do the other side because the axle's being held in place. Adding the running boards was a little tricky. I did it by eye, but you might like to mark them with a pair of dividers to make sure you get them the same both sides. Any mistakes here will be very visible on the final model. 
but as with many white metal models, parts can be persuaded into position afterwards. I reamed out the wheels with successive drill bits until they were a snug fit over the axles. I kept the soldering iron at a fairly low temperature, but increased it slightly to about 180 degrees. Apart from that, it was the same process as soldering the white metal parts. Flux, a tiny piece of wood's metal, and a little bit of heat. Here is a real close-up so you can see the changing colour of the wood's metal as it changes from a liquid to a solid. Job done. Altogether it took about two hours. By far the longest job was filing the spokes on the wheels. This is a good beginner's project if you have a temperature controlled iron. 
If you don't, then by all means solder the wheels together, but you'd be far better off gluing the white metal. This carriage was made to sit on a broad gauge carriage truck. I think it looks great, and the best part is that the prototypes tended to be black. All it needs is a quick spray from the can. <laughs>